Okay, so what I will report on is first a paper uh, quite recently published by uh, Mark Levine, Simon Pepalele, and Srinivas um, um, about the other characteristic of homogeneous and quasi homogeneous hypersurfaces. And what I will focus on more is, is another um, preprint on the archive by me, the quadratic other characteristic of memory cycle. So um, and we start with discussing maybe the the problem or the questions in algebraic geometry. So generally speaking, the aim is to study singularities which are related or arise. Arise, arise, oops. Arising as the generations of small families. What do I mean by that? So, usually the setting. Case the setting is always like that. We have some scheme over a base. And the base has some close point, or maybe generate doesn't have to be a point, which we call a special special point, then that's the open what I denote by eta, the complement, and then I can speak about what I call the special fiber and the, the general fiber. So that's the usual setting. Okay. Um, so, yeah, in some cases, for example, we can think about the base. Maybe I'll give some example. So, if we have a function from A2 to A1, which is, say, This function, maybe, then if we look over zero, that's the special fiber, it's a singular pin. Let's write that over zero. So I look at the fiber F minus one of T. If t is zero, I allow I allow it to be singular, like in this case, which is singular and non-reduced. And in the other case, I assume it's smooth, like like this example, maybe just to have in mind. Yeah. So in this example, my base is a one. Point is zero in GM. Yeah, so it's it's to have in mind, but we will look at the at a local setting. So in our local setting, usually the base always it will be the spec of a discrete valuation ring O. And then we have K in the residue field. Capital K, the quotient field. So that that will always be the setting. So setting. Local setting. Oh, is a discrete valuation ring. 
for example, KT. If OK is the fraction field. And we always assume that the general fiber is smooth. And then the idea is to, to study maybe the singularities of X sigma when we also have in mind this X eta. So I will describe some tools to do it. Um, um, generally in algebraic geometry, and uh, look for motivic version for, for each of them, in some motivic context. So, discuss about tools to study them, but in fact, I will look for motivic, some, some interpretation of motivic enhancement. So first we have what we call functor of nearby or vanishing cycles, nearby cycles. So I think it starts with Milner also for complex manifolds. Look at this matching for each point. We take the cohomology of the Milner fiber, which is just take a little ball inside the inside the point and intersect it with a T circle, so it's even smaller than epsilon. And then uh, we study this. And then in SGA seven due to the lean, I think there's an Italian version, which is a functor from the derived category of X eta, constructible sheaves to X sigma. So that's, that's the general setting in algebraic geometry. And then there is by Ayub, developed a formalism in the setting of motivic homotopy theory, which is from SH, SH, X sigma. That's a functor, which I'll describe some of, some of its properties that I'm interested in. Um, but when I say SH, can I assume that that's a well-known category in this? Or shall I say a few words about what I consider here? No, it's okay. Any questions? Okay. Um, so it's properties, which I'm interested in, so maybe the most important that I'm going to use is that it can be computed on on restriction of 
Using pieces over reduced normal crossing divisor x sigma. What do I mean by that? I mean that if x sigma assume that it's a reduced normal crossing divisor and I have some smooth component inside, then psi f of one x eta restricted to d to this piece is in fact v star of psi of one x eta restricted to the circle. Okay, so v is the map from d circle to d when um, d circle is the, the smooth locus of d. So usually, usually if d is some component, then I just remove the, the intersection with other component inside x sigma. So it's a push forward of this, and then this is a small place of this, so rigidly I can compute this. So I can write it. Um, v star one um, D zero. Um, Okay, so that's what I mean by can be computed. Okay, another property is the psi i d is monoidal. In fact, maybe I use it here. Psi i d one x theta is one. Sigma. Uh, okay, psi f of one has is a shift. Yeah. I can restrict to open subsets and so so okay, so these are some properties that I'm going to use. And in fact, I'm going to interpret some other things with this one. So let's move on to another tool. So this comes from the theory of motivic. Sorry, what do I mean by that and this is a shift? Um, yeah, what do I mean by that? I mean that um, say um, I can look at uh, it's like this restriction. But basically, I mean that yeah, I can if I have um, an open open subset, I can like like D or some U, then I can restrict to, to that, take the pullback, and then it, um, 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 it satisfies the shift axiom. So I can look, for example, at this thing locally at an open subset, locally at the point. Okay. Yeah. And about stable homotopy categories, do you think about them as an, infinite categories or just homotopy categories? Um, 
Yeah, I guess it, it doesn't really matter for anything that I'm going to say. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so the other tool is coming from motivic integration. There is also a notion there of motivic nearby cycles, which means something a bit different on motivic, with motivic male no fiber. This is due to the name. Was there? Savage, I guess. So we have there's the notion of log resolution. Which is even say we have our setting, and I don't know what X sigma is, but sometimes I can have a map. age such that at least yeah the pullback y sigma is a normal crossing y theta is the same so y sigma Simple normal crossing divisor. The assumption. So I can write it that way as a sum to S. And then for I, which is a subset of one to S, I define Ti to be the intersection of two di's in i and di circle to be di minus the other component. Um, and then what they did in this in this setting, they define some um, tal coverings for each of those di. I di tilde, which Okay, I'll describe how they are defined. So if we take, say, here, the map to the base is F. Oh, and I denote by Fy. Y, this composition. So the idea of the construction is as follows. They you can describe Fy locally on Di as Q times the multiplication of Ti to the Ai. Well, Di locally is V of Ti. Um, then um, uh, and using vertical, then we can base change with taking a root of this u 
n fruit when n is the GCD of the AIs. And then after that, we get and, and then normalize the result. The normalization. And get those coverings. And then the motivic minimum fiber is defined. That's the sum of the classes the I times y minus L I minus one and that is in the Brotendick uh ring of varieties of the base. Okay. Um, have to invert L when okay, L is the class of A1. Um, and this ring is obtained by cut and paste, by um, um, imposing cut and paste relations on, on varieties of the base. Um, so this is what they define. It seems to have a weird gadget, but it connects to what I said before that this is in fact just it equals the class of psi f one x eta. Um, whenever x is a semi stable king. which is something I will uh, expand on later. And this is a result by Ayub Ipola and Sedak. Yeah, so this seems like a different theory, but it gives us a tool to compute this factor. If we know how to describe this cover, um, so that's about it. And maybe another idea or another to how to how to study uh, these singularities is just to look at the Euler characteristics. First of the singular fiber, and then maybe first of the generic fiber, and then of the singular fiber, and then just ask what the difference is. Uh, how, how does this special fiber differs from, from the rest. And if I can describe it in terms of, the aim maybe is to describe it. In terms of invariance, 
of the singularities is sigma. What do I mean by this difference? I mean, these guys live in different groups. Uh, I first, I, I still, uh, I mean, I still don't mean in any motivic sense. Say that oh, it's oh, okay. open, so say they are integer. And okay. yeah, I, yeah. I will still, yeah, so, so this is just the usual other characteristic. Yeah, and yes, soon, soon I'll, I'll arrive at the, the motivic to do in the motivic case. Yeah, so if I have such a thing, then that, that is what I call here a conductor formula. And then, yeah, so, yeah, so I said I'm talking about motivic, so, so how can I make it motivic? So in the motivic setting, I have the motivic other characteristic. So maybe I'll just briefly describe how it can be defined. So say that X over a field um, perfect field is finite type and separated. Then you can look at P um, sharp of one X or P shriek of one X in this HK, which I will call the motive. Of X and this is the relative of compact support. Um, so at least when K is of characteristic zero, at least characteristic k is zero. These are dualizable objects. Dualizable. And if not, then if x is smooth and proper, it is also dual. And possibly in in many other cases. Anyway, when it is, then there is the notion of categorical um, Euler characteristic. When okay, I'll just describe it in this case in this category. So 
this motif as a dual. Position. Then swap them. Not the, these maps coming from. The duality. Um, what I get here, I will call, in this case, when I took P shriek, I will call it, this would be the motivic model characteristic with compact support of X of K. Okay, so I get this thing, and well, do I get it? So it's in the endomorphism ring of the unit. 1K in the category SHK. And when K is a perfect spin, then you know that to Morel, this is the Grotendieck bit ring of K. Um, so we get something expressible by quadratic form. And this is the big completion of quadratic forms. So um, that's what we get. So, well, if K is embeddable, in C or in R, then we can retrieve the usual other characteristic of a C or R by taking the rank and the signature um, right. so he generalizes in this case he generalizes the the usual other characteristic maybe it has some more information in it uh, yeah, so that's what I take in a motivic setting, and yeah, I take the version with compact support when I um, when I talk about singular varieties, because what's good in it, I think, be a nice property. Of the compact support version. is that it satisfies um, cut and paste. Meaning, if I can write text, you need to open and close schemes, then file x over k, you so from now on I will also talk I will always talk about this version with compact support even if I don't write the same. Okay, yeah, so this it may be a refined enumerative um, thing, and one can ask 
can we get some formula of this kind with, with this motivic Euler characteristic. And then that's where the first paper that I said that I'm going to talk about start. So the idea, the first thing is to get quadratic. formula for hypersurface. So let's define exactly what is the setting that we're going to talk about now. So, um, Oh, as before is a discrete valuation ring, K and K like before. And we take T, you know, to be a uniformizer that we choose. We took F to be a homogeneous polynomial. Can or be mixed characteristic? Uh, and we assume, so the, the polynomial is of degree E and we assume that the GCD of E and the characteristic is one. So that's the assumption. And then we consider the following projective hypersurface HF, and that's the zero set of F minus E TN plus one to the E. That's something in PN plus one over O. The discrete valuation. Okay, so mm -hmm. well, so that's uh, what I consider. So if we think about the example, the example that we had before, so in a projective setting. X square minus Y squared. So we'll take this thing minus T T squared in this case. And then we'll look about the generic and the special fiber. And then the formula says the formula. Just write it down first and then I'll explain. So I take this denote by H by H. So I have H T. And I have H zero. So, well, so first, let's see what, what we have here. So, 
Um, so chi of H zero is in the residue field. So that the work can be complete of K. Now, if we just look at this thing, we get something of a K, of a big K. So as, as Alex said, as, unlike integers, we can really compare them just as they are. Um, but we have a specialization map to the work and the string of K. Which algebraically it can just be defined as putting like t equals one. Um, so it can just be described algebraically very simply, and then so that's this SPT. Of course, it depends on the choose of the uniformizer. Everything here depends on it. So, um, yeah. So that's so that's the thing that I can I can ask. What is that? Yeah, that's uh, the left hand side, and then the right hand side says that it's this thing. So what is this. So, okay, so E or one just uh, describe the um, quadratic form. Say that A describes the quadratic forms that corresponds to X goes to A squared. That's just the notation. And this is the local Euler class at zero, which is my singularity. Um, so it has some geometric definition, but it's also just some algebraic invariants of the um, Jacobian ring of that. So I can take it. Uh, invariant. Oh, it's related to some invariant of J of F, which is K X zero X ten minus derivatives. Uh, so we have some element which is called the shea uh, storage element which defines some quadratic form which is what we call the Euler class so I'm not saying how it's defined exactly but it has some purely algebraic definition inside this thing okay so that's the formula the main formula proven in this paper and let's see, let's think first that everything was complex and we just take the usual complex um, um, Euler characteristic. So here we don't have the specialization of, we just have integers and then over C with, instead of taking a quadratic form, we take its rank, so this is, zero there, um, and then what we have here is the rank of the Jacobian ring, and that is a formula by Milner. So over C, it's a um, formula by Milner, and this, this paper just extends it to a motivic setting, so this is zero over C. And also, if we check it over R, when you take signature, it's also zero. So this 
thing just appears in a motivic context. If we were not in a motivic context, we just this equals the over C to the rank of this. Um, well, so that's the formula I'm not going to say much about how to get it. I'll just say that yeah. So first use the result by Levin and Raxit, which describes chi of the smooth things in terms of trace of coach cohomology of product. So that's some way to, to compute this sky. And then they, if, if we use it and describe describe grading in the Jacobian ring, it's a graded ring in terms of watch cosmology. And then it's possible like one have maybe to, to look at the dimension if it's even or odd, it's a different computation, but at the end they get the same formula. Um, so that's it about this paper. Um, now I'm going to describe the rest of the talk is how um, I, how to, to take this formula and make it local in a way. Um, and that way, getting a more general setting for, for this formula than the setting of this computation in a hyper So, so the aim is to make the formula local that is extend the more general setting. And that is with interpreting terms here. Things terms with a use factor. So the setting now is as follows. So let f from x to spec o be a flat proper map and assume that x is smooth over the base field. That xk over k is also smooth. That's the uh, general fiber. And also, okay, maybe it's not more general in the setting that I also assume that the characteristic is zero. Um, but I also take 
X sigma B isolated angular So maybe I didn't emphasize here in this setting. So what is H zero? If I take T equals zero, then I have like V of F in PN plus one. So just to have some geometric picture in mind. So H zero is a projective Cone TN plus one with base V of F in PN. So it's like PN times this axis. This is H zero, and the singularity. Um, it has one singularity in zero, while H T has no singularity. So okay, over capital. K. So here I have a few singularities, and I just want to say that locally they look like this case, and then extend the formula. So I assume also that for each T and P low and gap resolves T. And I can write the assumption in that way. The, the other assumption that inside this blow up, the intersection of the exceptional divisor okay the exceptional divisor which are the note d1 and The strict transform of um, X sigma shall denote D two is transversal. In the blow up. So that's one way to put it. Another way to put it um, I'm not sure which seems square there, but probably both is to say that at the stock. OXP, MP the maximum ideal and say that it's generated by S0 to Sn, a regular sequence. We can write a 
f star t equals f to s zero to s n plus h, well, f is homogeneous degree e, and h belongs to m p e plus one. with B, F, and P, N, over K, P, Earth, the field, so, okay, it's saying the same thing because this V of F is actually the intersection in the blower. Um, this shows that, the way that I need to do to, to give this assumption of this thing is that um, I want to, it, it's like saying that X looks at P, that's what I want, that's what I'm formulating here, that X look at P like a homogeneous. Singularity defined by F. This is what allows me to reduce to this case, which now I remember that I forgot, I see that I forgot to give you some assumption here. So here the assumption is that the thing defined by F is smooth. in um, PM, KP. So that's another assumption that I forgot to tell you, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry if it's, if it's too, much, too many details, but yeah, so I have, I need to have this assumption here and just, a way to extend it to make similar assumption is, is the assumption that they that they have here. And then with all these assumptions, I claim the theorem is that if I take the Euler characteristic of Restricted to P minus one, then this thing is just the same as what I get here from the polynomial. So let, let me give it a symbol. So yeah, I'm back to this formula. And then let me call this. Delta T F. So this the quadratic form is an invariant of F. It's just related to F and to this scheme age F. And here I'm in the more general setting. So I have X. So I claim that this thing is the same as delta T F. So maybe I can think of this, like this difference as an expression or some enumerative expression related to uh, vanishing cycles. Okay. Of age of the hypersurface, and this is like, some way to measure vanishing cycles of x at p. Um, after taking all the characteristics, all the characteristics of, and I claim that the, they are both 
the claim is that they are both the same. Mm. Well, so what's the idea of the proof? So first I want to interpret everything in terms of psi f and then compute chi of psi f restricted to p by p says after reducing to y, which is a reduced normal crossing divider. Remember, as I told you, in this case, I can compute psi. And that is assumed, that is achieved, uh, achieved as follows. So first I can assume that P is the only singular singularity. As everything here is local and that X is the spec. OXP. So let's say I'm in this setting, and then I make the following construction. I take X, I blow up at P, X hat. Then I make E base change of T, so I take T prime to the E equals T. That times x equals t prime times t prime to the e minus t. And then I normalize to get some scheme which I denote by one by y. Um, And then I claim that by this process, I get a reduced normal crossing divisor on which I can compute things. And that allows me to compare the two schemes and get this formula. So let's see why. Write it down again. So I have x. X hat, I have X hat E, and I have Y. And yeah, I don't know what X sigma is, but I know that X hat sigma is. EPN plus the strict transform pi minus one with X sigma. So it's non reduced.
as you can see. Yeah. And to do everything here, I just do a local computation on the covering of the block. So let's try to do it. Let's see what, what we get. So if I write x at, I can write it as proj oxp p0 to tn modulo some idea. That's from definition of flow up. It can be described this way. Um, can write it as the union of UIs, where UI is defined by where TI is not zero. And then look at this cover. So let's say that I just look at on U zero and similar for all the rest. It's easier to describe it on U zero. So I can write from my assumption, I can write uh, F star T um, as F plus H. I give this assumption. Yeah. So it's F plus H. But here on U zero, a zero is invertible, so I can write it as S zero to the E times F one is one over S zero plus N over S zero plus H tilde. Well, H tilde is in MP. So I will call this U0. That's how I write it. So and it's so I have like S0 to the E times U0. So one of them S0 defined. This part, which is the exceptional divisor, and U0 define this part. And the aim of the process is just to get rid of this E, basically. So here, this thing say, this here, X sigma is defined by T, F star T being S0 to the E times U0. And now after base change, I get T prime to the E equals S0 to the E times U0. Now the normalization happens to be just adjoining, adjoining. Tn plus one, which is T prime over S zero. So I get T prime equal Tn plus one times S zero, which is a reduced normal crossing divide. So here in Y sigma, I have D1 tilde plus D2 tilde. Which cover these pieces that are reduced. So that's, um, that's the computation. That's what I get, but I mean, even if you didn't follow, just um, just this process is just some process to get in this setting uh, a reduced divisor, which I can 
compute. And these pieces, D1 tilde and D2 tilde, are smooth, and I can compute them. So maybe from here, you see that Tn plus 1 to the E equals U0. That's the equation I get here. And then maybe it gives you a hint. So when I compute it, I get the D1 tilde is um, isomorphic to V of F minus Tn plus 1 to the E inside Pn plus 1. Kp and d1 2 tilde is just v of f in pn kp. So now these pieces, what they give me is something related to to the formula by Levin, Petroliere, and Srinivas. Let's see, maybe I'll show you. So that's what I get just from this local computation. So now, that I of psi f restricted to p, I of d1. Tilda minus minus one times chi of d one two tilda now if you remember what I told you before about the approach of motivic integration and the motivic Milner fiber in that case, so the formula that I get here is just, it's just a special case. Of a Yub. If I was a bug formula. Which this method of proof, it reproves it, but just in the case that there are no triple intersection. No triple intersection. The I is the J E K. It's always empty. Yeah, but they prove it in the general case by using uh, rigid analytic motives. But anyway, the coverings that I got here are the DNF, are the coverings of the net was so it, this process gives them and it gives this formula. And now let's see how I um how it's Reconnected to how it's connected to the formula by Levin, the Paliale, and Srinivas. So you can see that this D1 tilde, it looks like um, the hypersurface that they consider when they put T, when you put T equals one. So it appears that this space just equals this specialization map of chi of h, age, yeah, age, the hypersurface related to f t. So that's what this piece gives me. And this piece, well, 
if you remember, the H0 is a projective cone, projective cone of a BF. So it's like A1, so minus one is I of A1. times I of BF plus one. So I can remove the point and then I, I have like A1 times A1 times the base. So it's just geometrically, I have this thing. If I apply it here, D1, to tilde is phi of f. So get that this thing equals minus phi of h zero f minus one. And then I just, if you just look what I wrote here, then this is the theorem that I formulated about this theorem. And so that's the idea of the computation of the theorem. And then what does it give me? So as a corollary, it let us um, generalize the formula. So the corollary is that with the same assumptions. This thing of x equals the sum of i equals one to s. Trace the other residue field for the points may be different, but in each point I get some e from the polynomial. So I have e i minus one. plus minus pi to the n times qfi, that's the special quadratic form I told you about, and the Jacobian ring, and I have some, in this case, that is because uh, this equals chi of psi f. It's like sigma. And then I can write it as the sum of traces of kpi over k. I take psi f locally at each point, minus one. Um, so that's maybe for what I call the cut base of sheaf properties of if um, this by the theorem this equals to delta t of f which is just this from the formula we want to break down. So the 
Um, yeah, so that's that's it. That's the idea. What I ignored is that is some possible generalization. So if we go back, this formula there is also so here it's a homogeneous polynomial. There is also a weighted homogeneous version. And also for this weighted homogeneous version, it's possible to generalize to something that locally looks like a weighted, weighted homogeneous, although I think it was a homogeneous singularity. Um, so that's also possible to do. Since I still have time, maybe I'll just describe it briefly. So, without too many details, too much. Yeah. So, the weighted homogeneous case. is quite similar, but F is weighted homogeneous with A, A zero up to A N are the weights. And I assume that the LCM of them divides E, GCD is one. And that um, okay. So that, that's what I assume. And I have the weighted projective space PA, which is by definition which, you know, by K, so K X zero to XN when I take the grading. with A, yeah? so the weight of each Xi is Ai. And I have, I have a map from Pn to this weighted projective space. A weighted projective space. Uh, the natural map, so this is approach K T0 to Tn with the usual grading. And the map corresponds to matching Xi to Ti to the Ai. Um, then this space can also be described as a quotient of Pn modulo the action of the group mu a when mu a is mu a is zero times mu a and the group scheme. Well, these are the roots of unity. And theta AI acts on TI along 
Okay. Uh, so with this description, the weighted projective space is a quotient of the usual projective space. Um, and then in this formula, taking care of the weights, I won't write to you the, the exact formula, but just you can have like this, what they call LPS formula. In that setting, and the important assumption maybe is about F. That assumption is that F. Uh, is a smooth washing hypersurface F defines defines a smooth quotient hypersurface uh, meaning that if we take what F defines here if we take what F defines here then there's a polynomial G here um which defines a smooth hypersynthesis. So it's a quotient of smooth G. So let's say if we take G and T zero to T M. to the A0, Tn to the A, and this homogeneous polynomial defines each this smooth in Tn. So that's the assumption, and then I have a formula taking care of the weight. And this can also be extended, extended to a local formula. with a similar construction. So the same theorem that I told you before, and the construction is similar. I just analogous to this case, to this theory, I just take a base change such that the scheme that I talk about is a quotient by the group. So I think X, the problem here is that even the components that I had before, D1 and D2, they are not smooth. PA, this space is not smooth. So I take Z, which is X when I add the AI roots of the SIs in the context of the proof. Then in this scheme, I make the same, 
the same construction as before. So in this D I bear Y Z, same construction. I take the normalization of the base change of the blow up, see? And then now with this base change, and this is a quotient map. So X is actually the mod mu. And then if I take Y is a mod mu, the group, then I get a covering of X. And here, let's denote this by Y in this case. And here, Y sigma um, is be described again with D1 tilde plus D1 tilde, which are similar description. So everything holds and they are smooth. D1 tilde and D1 tilde are smooth. Also here, D1 and D2, D1 is not smooth. It doesn't matter for the proof because I, I compute everything on this reduction, right? Anyway, so just using this method, I get also the same thing in this somewhat more general case with weights. And yeah, so that's basically what I wanted to talk about. And yeah, if we're back to the formula, then to this formula or to its generalization, then yeah, so we always have some polynomial in the background, like a homogeneous or weighted homogeneous polynomial. Um, the thing is, maybe we want to have some formula for a more general singularity. The thing is that in this motivic context, we have this term. Right? In the more general formula. Here we still have those EI minus one, which are related to polynomials, which are related to the singularities. So maybe, I mean, it would be nice if there's a more general, if there's a formula for a more general singularity, but we see that in this motivic setting, we always have this additional term that we don't see over the complex or real number and that somehow we have to account if we want to consider a more general case. Um, so that's what I can do at this stage. Any questions or comments? Yeah, thank you very much for your talk. Are there any questions? Okay, I have a couple of questions. So the first one is, uh, is anything now if uh, this base, I mean, this uh, discrete relation ring, it's of mixed characteristic, say periodic numbers or something like that? Yeah, so, Mark Levin has another, has a Riemann uh, Gurevitz formula, which is in a kind of base which is not, not local, like the mixed characteristic, but to, to, to apply this setting to a mixed characteristic setting then 
the answer is no, there is nothing, no. Like, this all works specifically in this setting. But yeah, we have this specialization map. The setting and all of that. That's, that's what we have now. Okay, thanks. And uh, again, about this term that we don't see in the classical session, I mean, this E minus one. Yeah. Can you say again, can it be interpreted? I mean, can you say again, how, how can you interpret in terms of singularity or something else? Yeah, so, I mean, so so yeah so the thing is it's quite mysterious i don't know how to interpret it in, in a general case so in this case here i have like the scheme itself is with some polynomial f or, uh, which is of degree e and in the more general setting then my assumption maybe if i write it this way then you don't see any polynomial but basically it says that like the, the blowing up res resolves it basically it says that i write it locally as some polynomial plus something that is probably negligible so still i have this polynomial and a is the degree of the polynomial so um i use that and on proving this thing, then you, you have to use, there is this degree of the polynomial, it's just in the, in the computation, you do that, I mean. Uh -huh. So, um, and then it appears. So, um, so yeah, I don't, I mean, I just said that it would be nice if there was something more general, but they don't have it. Okay, yeah, see. So at the moment it appears only just at this degree of the polynomial and we don't know any yeah. interpretation. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay, I see. Interesting. Yeah. 